and welcome back to the Football Jiggy podcast. My name is Thomas Durning, and today I'm joined by my co-host, Pierce McLaughlin. Hello, Pierce. Hello, how are you doing? I'm doing well. On today's podcast, we'll be discussing the news that football broadcaster Viaplay will be pulling out of the UK. We will also be discussing all the latest transfer news from around the globe. And at the end of the podcast, Pierce will be given a rundown of all the latest Asian football news. So coming up next, we'll be discussing the news of broadcaster Viaplay pulling out of the UK. So on the Thursday, the 20th of July, Viaplay announced that it would end its coverage of sport in the UK. This includes broadcasting Scotland men's matches, the Scottish League Cup and URC rugby. The company has said it, it, at the moment it's business as usual. And customers in the UK can still watch all the relevant sport they want to watch. However, um, probably by the next season, Viaplay will be will be gone. So, Pierce, what is your reaction to Viaplay pulling out of the UK? So, pretty much a shock, um, considering most of the the cup competitions in the UK as well as like rugby as well. Uh, and international matches have been on via play for the majority of like either down in England or up in Scotland. Um, so it's a massive kind of shock to be honest. It's pretty much like back in the day when Satanta Sports pulled out of um British football as well. Cause they were in like uh, collaboration with ESPN at the time. Um so it's pretty much a shock because obviously we only recently had the international uh, qualifiers. Uh, last month, and Viaplay was advertising how to sign up for the, for the rest of the year. You can buy the package for the future Scotland matches, so that's putting that right up in the air right away. And obviously, the fact is, like a lot of people might be out of pocket because they might have took that um offer. I think it was like seventy pounds for like the for the year for Viaplay, and that included the Scottish Cup, Scottish League Cup, and international matches as well as. Um, all your rugby and that down south as well. So no, it's a, pretty much a shock. And uh, when I heard the news, I couldn't believe it to be honest. Yeah, um, it was a shock. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, you know, Via plays such a massive kind of broadcaster in Scotland, especially. You know, as I just said, you know, all the Scotland men's matches get played on Via Play. That's the only way you can watch Scotland, and also the League Cup, which. Uh, via play, they, they show all the group stage matches and then they, they, they show all the knockout rounds, which includes the final as well. So, um, for Scottish football fans, um, it's you know, it, it's quite kind of shocking news, you know, because basically at the moment, in terms of the Scotland's men national team and the League Cup and also rugby across the UK, we don't know what kind of the next steps are where, um, you know, these kind of sports will be. Uh, where they'll be shown um, kind of in the future uh, it's it's also a shock as well because like you know I'm I'm a subscriber to Viaplay so I pay a uh, monthly to to you know um, access Viaplay and watch uh, you know the, the men, Scotland's men's national team and the League Cup so for me at the moment it's quite I, I don't know what's going on with um, what you know what the next steps are you know I don't think like the SFA, for example, I don't think they are massively, um, you know, worried at the moment because I think a lot of the, the because with the deal that Viaplay have got with the Scottish football authorities, I think all the money, the majority of the money's already been paid, so they're not, so it's not necessarily that they're they're, they're very worried that you know, there's outstanding money that's still to be played to the kind of football authorities in Scotland, so, um. Yeah, I mean, it's shocking news. You know, we don't really know. It's quite all up in the air at the moment as to what's happening in, in terms of what the next steps are for, you know, rugby and football in Scotland. Uh, so I just just continue with this. So obviously as a reaction to this news, there's been senior people in government, I think in the Scottish government especially, who are asking um, for the BBC and STV uh, to kind of step up and purchase the Scotland international matches. Um so Pierce, do you think uh, this could happen or should happen? 
It should happen because you look at down south in England, um, all their matches are shown for free on ITV. Um, so why can't the Scottish authorities know that Scotland are qualified for major tournaments? Oh, they're qualified for one and they're pretty much on course to qualify for second and things are going well within the Scotland camp. So you probably buy it at the highest because the fact is to have your your match is shown for free across the country gets everyone, regardless of background, where you can afford to watch it or not. And I think your major broadcasters should have the rights to national team matches. And I think BBC probably is the most predominant one because obviously they show the sports scene highlights and stuff like that. And like they, some, they show some Scottish Cup games. Um, so I think BBC or TV should step up and just fork out the money that um that via play were paying, or maybe a bit more, and just just to secure the rights of like your national team and probably potentially your your League Cup and Scottish Cup games. But I think the national team more because how well Scotland are doing and um some major matches coming up in the not too distant future, uh, and the qualification hopes of um the Euros. Yep. Um, I'm a massive kind of advocate for this because uh, recently I read that uh, Scotland, and I'm not sure if it's Republic of Ireland or Northern Ireland, but only two countries in the world in terms of watching football have to pay to watch their, their country, uh, what have to pay to watch their country play football, and that is Scotland and either Republic of Northern Ireland. I think it's Northern Ireland. So that kind of says a lot, that the fact that 99 percent of countries around the world can watch their national team for free on, you know, broadband telly and main, main kind of main channels and whether Scotland fans and you know we can't we have to pay a monthly subscription or we have to pay for a year to watch our you know um our national team play. I, I think it's I think it's kind of I think it's massively unfair because um as well as that it's the fact that um you know, when you uh, go on SCV, for example, uh, or Channel 4, in Scotland, you can watch England national team play for free, but you can't, and, and you're in Scotland, so so it's like you can watch a different country for free, but you can't watch your own country play for free. So um, I definitely think something should be done about it. I, I think for years it's been a massive problem. Um, and you were saying there, you made a good point about the fact that the men's national team for Scotland are doing really well at the moment. And, you know, there is, you know, a sudden, because of how well they're doing, there's a lot more kind of audience and, you know, a lot more fans are coming to the stadium. But I think if the Scotland men's national team, uh, if the SCV or the BBC got the rights to it, I think the the kind of audience would grow even more. You know, you would get even more viewers on telly. Um, so I, I definitely think the BBC and the STV should step in here and try and secure the rights because uh, I think it's I, I just think it's massively unfair um that you know Scotland fans have to you know pay a subscription to watch their national team whereas England they don't they can just watch it on you know the the kind of main tele channels which is you know I think it's I think it's unfair so hopefully. And kind of my view, hopefully something happens with that, and you know we kind of see Scotland's men's national team playing the BBC or the STV in the future. Yeah, I think they're spot on, Tom. Um, because obviously you must mention Report Ireland. Yeah, they do watch it on the the normal channel, say RTE. Um, and like you say, also South Korea, they have their own sports channels, which are all um free to watch in terms of the national teams and even the uh, the Korean league. You can watch for free as well on just like the sports channels. Um, but in terms of like the Premier League and stuff, like you need to subscribe. But in terms of like you say, I think it's you said one or two, which I think is a fantastic point. Two two countries around the world that can't watch their own national team for free. I think that's absolutely ridiculous. And like you say, like the fact is, like you should be able to watch your, that should be a privilege that you should just get to watch your team, your country, for free. And like you say, like the fact is you can watch your, your closest rivals in England, who always kind of make it far and it kind of makes you envious. But the fact is you, you can watch them for free, but you have to pay for Scotland that, let's be honest, most of the time haven't been successful. 
in qualifying for major tournaments. But now the fact is that we are successful. I think we should it sh- we should make should kind of give our major broadcasters the the push that they need to go and purchase the rights and um, broadcast our uh, national team games. Yeah, just kind of I'm, I'm making the point with England because obviously they're the closest kind of country to Scotland. But I also make the point as well about England because when I see because I think England. The, the English audience can watch the women's team and also the men's team uh, play for free. So, uh, like you know, I, I think they're showing on... So, the men's team is showing on Channel 4, and I'm not sure what channel the women's team's shown on, but uh, what, when I look at, like, the England football uh, in terms of, like, you know, the, the audience, I think a lot of the audience, like, because they're so invested in it, I think a lot of it comes from, like, the audience from watching it on television you know they got so that's why they have that kind of unity when it comes to like major tournaments and stuff like that and although the audience in terms of the Scotland's men's national team is getting better and better and better I still think it could get better because you know I still think they miss out a lot on kind of like people watching it on on TV uh, on the main kind of channels so you know I, basically I think there's a kind of you can, the BBC and ACV are kind of missing a step here because I think the viewing figures would be would grow so much. I think as well, yeah, they would go really, they would push really, they would push really high. So, uh, again, I definitely think the BBC and ACV should they should do something. They should try and work as hard as they can to try and secure the rights because I think it would definitely it would definitely improve. The, the viewing figures for the men's national team and also the women's national team as well because I think they do get shown BBC Alba at the moment and uh, but you know I, I just think um, it is time because I think it is massively unfair that you have to pay a subscription to watch your own country play football so uh, yeah so let's hope something happens um, so coming up next we'll be discussing all the latest transfer news from around the globe so the biggest transfer news that is dominating the headlines is the current situation involving Kylian Mbappe. So PSG have decided to leave Kylian Mbappe out of their pre-season tour as it is speculation that the club believed Mbappe has already agreed a free transfer to Real Madrid in 2024. Due to this, PSG are now willing to listen to offers as they want to sell Mbappe this summer rather than leave him uh, rather than let him leave on a free transfer in 2024. So uh, now that PSG are willing to listen to offers, there's already been a bid, and that is from Saudi Arabian club Al-Halal, who have submitted a world record £232 million bid for Mbappe, which would be at which is a world record bid at the moment. So the plan for Al-Halal, uh, their plan is to offer Mbappe a two hundred million dollar uh, a year salary, um, and they are willing to just let Mbappe play for Al Halal uh, for one season, and then let him go to Real Madrid in summer twenty twenty four. So Pierce, what is your current reaction to the current Kylian Mbappe situation? Well, like you, like you say, it's like it's just a circus, and that is the world that is PSG because they're the ones that usually fling money. At, at teams and just buy the best players and give them so much uh, money in terms of salary and sponsorship and bonuses. And the fact is, that the writing was on the wall last uh, was it last summer when no two two uh, last summer when Real Madrid won the Champions League uh, before they even played the the knockout tie. Well, PSG looked as if they were going to go through, and it was like the Kylian Mbappe kind of preview for Real Madrid. And then obviously they changed their mind at the end of the season. They announced a, two, a new two-year deal. And obviously with an option of a third year. But that option wasn't down to the club. It was down to Kylian Mbappe. And like you say, he was always destined, I think, to go to Real Madrid. And that's always been his dream as a little boy, regardless of how much money he threw at him. And obviously with the the owners, like, you can see that the They've invested so much money into Mbappe that they don't want to lose. That's kind of why they're trying to sell him. But I think all the power is in uh, killing Mbappe's camp because he can just sit there and do a Gareth Bale, which Gareth Bale did at Real Madrid the last season, and just pick up that 650 grand a week and barely play. Because I think 
Mbappe is due about oh, 200 million in terms of wages and bonuses because he's due a 77 million pound loyalty bonus just for the season, which is ridiculous money. And I thought he was on a, a, a billion, no, sorry, not a billion, sorry, a, a million pound a week, but he's actually on two million pounds a week, which is ridiculous because he's only 24 years of age. Um, the money being offered, like you say, from Saudi Israel, that's just even even more ridiculous. Two hundred million pound for the for the year, and in wages that was just astronomical. Um, like most people don't even ever see that money in a lifetime, and this boy's getting money thrown at him left, right, and centre. And like you say, he's probably one of the the best players in the world at the moment. But like you say, he's in the French league, and I think. For him, he just has to leave um, PSG. Whether that will be this summer or next summer, I'm not too sure. Yeah, I mean, it is a bit of a mess at the moment. Uh, you know, in terms of like Mbappe and PSG, I think I'm going to like go bit by bit. So the, I think Mbappe leaving PSG, I think that's been on the cards for quite a while now. Uh, you know, he signed a new deal last summer, but I think there was a lot of influence from, you know, I think the French president had a had a say in that. I think the Qatari government that that was being reported, they even had a say in it. That kind of persuaded them. Um. So I think Mbappe has wanted to leave PSG for quite a while now. Um. And I think it's just got to that point now where, like, you know, PSG are kind of, you know, that they're kind of tired of the the constant, you know, situation with Mbappe, and you know, I think they just. You know, I think the PSG president, I think he said that there is no way that Mbappe will leave PSG for, for free. You know, they just want to sell now and get the money and, you know, they can move on. Um, in terms of this Saudi Arabian bid for, for Mbappe, I mean, it is, it's crazy. It really is. I mean, uh, you'll never see that in Europe, that kind of bid, because the difference between European football and football in Saudi Arabia is that uh, teams in Europe have to adhere to finance. They have restrictions. But in Saudi Arabia, they don't. So basically, clubs in Saudi Arabia can just spend how much they want. They can put in any bids that they want and they will not have uh, uh, you know, rules to follow. So uh, that kind of bid from Saudi Arabia isn't surprising. Um, but it really is crazy when you look at the wages that Mbappe has been offered. I mean, it's it. I, I mean, I've said this on this podcast before, but the money it just it makes me feel uncomfortable because I don't think anyone's worth that in the world. Anyone, and you know, Mbappe is a superstar. He's going to probably be. He's going to come become. Well, he probably is the best player in the world at the moment. Um. So, you know, I understand that you know, you know, he's because he's that much of a superstar, but I don't. I don't agree with the money that's been, uh, you know, offered to him by Al Halal, and I don't also like the fact that they just want him for one season, and then he gets to go to Real Madrid. Um, you know, I don't see the benefit for Al Halal in that situation as well. You know, obviously, playing Saudi Arabia, you know, the fans in Saudi Arabia they'll love that, but um, I don't really see, uh, how that benefits Al Halal. Um, and in, in terms of the Real Madrid situation, I mean, it's obvious that Mbappe wants to go to Real Madrid. It's his, it's his dream club. Uh, you know, he's always wanted to play for them. I think Real Madrid have wanted Mbappe since he was 11 years old. So, you know, everything's steered towards um, Mbappe going to Real Madrid. And, you know, at the end of the day, I, I just think it's all, this is all revolving around Real Madrid a little bit. You know, I think as soon if if Real Madrid put in a bid, you know, right now, and Bappy would go, and it'd be all sorted. So, um, basically, I think everyone's just kind of waiting to see what Real Madrid do at the moment because I don't think Mbappe wants to go to Saudi Arabia. I don't think that'll happen. As you said, I think, you know, there is a high chance that he could just sit out this season, you know, and just collect the money that he's on and just wait until twenty twenty four. Um. So I just think at the moment everything's just wait everyone's just waiting for Real Madrid. Because I think as soon as Real Madrid put in the bid, um that's kind of acceptable. I think PSG will just accept it because I think they do 
they're at the point now where they do just want to get rid of Mbappe and just kind of move on and, you know, start, you know, developing without Mbappe again. So it's, it, it, you know, it, it's very complicated at the moment, the situation with Mbappe, you know. By this time next week, it'll probably be more clear as to, you know, where the situation lies. Um, so it's definitely, it's definitely an active one at the moment and we'll kind of see how that kind of plays out. Um, so moving on to transfer news in Scotland. So it has been a busy kind of last couple of days for Celtic as they have announced three signings and and they are um Polish defender Mike Narovki uh, and two South Korean players. Uh, one is called Hyokyu Kwon and Hyung Jun Yang. I think I got that right. Anyway, so. Slightly different because it's they pronounce their last name first, so it'd be Yang Hyun Jun and Kwon Hyuk Kyu. Well, thanks, Pierce. You know, <laughs> you're, you're, you're on hand. So, um, yeah, so Pierce, what's your reaction to Celtic's latest free signings? Well, I've not really heard much about the Polish centre back, um, um, Rocky. Um, well, I think his nickname's going to be Rocky. Um, so I think like he's obviously I think with Celtic spending quite a significant chunky transfer budget, I think is near enough five million pounds. Um I think let's be honest, Carter Vickers for Celtic is a guaranteed starter. So I think it will be between him and Carl Starfelt. And with Carl Starfelt being twenty eight years of age, and let's be honest, without Star uh, Carter Vickers next to him, he is quite shaky at times and he's got a mistake in him. So I think it might push Starfield up a level or you could see Starfield rotating quite a bit with uh, Morocco and obviously with the, the young uh, defender being 22 years of age and played for Liga Wars which is a, a decent standard because you've seen um, Josip Juranovic came from there and he just slotted it seamlessly into Celtic's uh, system on Dredge plus Coglu um, and in terms of the two the two South Koreans one's a holding midfielder tall physical very robust and he I think very similar to like uh people are calling him like the Busquets kind of player. He likes to hit, have forward thinking passes. And I think like, the closest player Celtic had to in recent times is probably near Beton, but obviously not to that level. Um, but he was quite a solid performer for Celtic Beton. And I think Celtic were kind of missing that kind of f- tall physical player, but it's also comfortable, neat and tidy in the ball. And I think with him being um even he was playing in the second division in Korea. Uh, the Key League 2, and he's played for the South Korean under-23 side, so he's on the verge of kind of making it into the, the national team whilst playing in the second division in Korea, so the fact that Celtic have paid nearly a million pounds for him shows you how highly he's rated in Korea and by Celtic. Uh, and obviously, Yang Hyun Jun is predominantly a right winger. He said that himself in uh, his uh, latest interview as he's been unveiled. Um, so I think he'll be competition with uh, Lilo Bader. And I think he's a very talented player. And um, we've seen both of them play. Uh, we've seen Young Hyun Jun play quite a significant bit for Gang One FC. And he was a standout player. Um, so I think the three of them are very good players that will come in and strengthen that squad that is already there. And I think you'll probably now see more Celtic kind of basically as them finalised their, their probably their window, basically. And you'll probably see more outgoings than incomings. But I think the three of them are very astute signings for uh, the club which will strengthen them in midfield defence and the, the forward areas yep um, you know uh, you know three kind of young signings uh, you know I think I, you know it, I think they've been planned for quite a while uh, these three players I think they were identified by Celtic quite quite a while ago so um, yeah so obviously really planned very early um, I haven't I'll be honest with you I have never seen them play <laughs> Any three of them, I've never seen them play live. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um. So, so uh, I've never seen them play live. I've only seen kind of clips of them, uh, on like YouTube and stuff. So, um, I don't really know too much about them. Um, am I right in saying that Yang Kyung Jun won Young Player of the Year in the J League last season? Yes. Yeah. So I mean that is. That is an impressive kind of achievement to have, you know. I say that kind of relegation threatened as well. Yeah, they, I mean that just makes it even better, doesn't 
So, uh, you know, that's really impressive. Uh, you know, you were saying there about uh, Kwon Hyok Kyu. You know, I think in terms of what you're saying, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm never going to compare him to Sergio Busquets, but he's kind of got that kind of height, you know, uh, kind of, you know, quite an a kind of attacking kind of player, you know, he kind of likes to play positive passes uh, up the field. Uh, you know, so I think I think in terms of like the physicality in Scotland, I think he could kind of cope well with it. Um, and obviously the post defender, uh, Naroki, uh, you know, he's quite young. I think he only kind of made, he kind of broke into the Liga Warsaw first team last season. So, you know, there's quite obviously a lot more to develop uh, with him, uh, you know, and, you know, there has been a track record of Polish players at Celtic in the past with, you know, Arthur Boric and, uh, you know, Juraski. So, um, he obviously probably knows a little bit about their success and, you know, he's probably looked at that and gone, you know, this is a really good place for me to be. So, yeah, so three kind of young, kind of promising, you know, players that have a lot to have a lot to improve and, you know, it'll be really interesting to see how they kind of develop and uh, improve in Scotland and at Celtic as well. Um, so moving on to other transfer news in Scotland, and it has been reported that Feyenoord have accepted a bid from Rangers to sign striker Danilo. So that bid is around about £6 million. Um, and I think Danilo is flying to Glasgow. And I think he might be even in Glasgow this afternoon to do a medical with Rangers. So, you know, I think that one could move pretty fast. Um, it's also been reported that Rangers are edging closer in their bid to sign Los Angeles midfielder Jose Cifuentes. So uh, just a little bit about that as well. So I think there'd already been a pre-contract uh, agreed for Cifuentes to come to Rangers later on in the year. But I think the Rangers manager, Michael Beale, uh, a few days ago was saying that they are they're working on trying to get Cifuentes to come to Rangers this summer. And, and kind of get him into the team and sign him right now rather than wait until later on in the year. So, Pierce, what is your re- reaction to the latest transfer news coming from Rangers? Oof. Um, well, well, Rangers under Michael Beale, they kind of need a rebuild. Well, I think, like you said, their, their strength in areas that they know they've, they've, uh, they've lost players and they're trying to strengthen the squad that they already have and raise the levels of the existing players that are there. And like you said, I t- you touched on Sefuentes, uh, the midfielder from LAFC. Well, they're, they're league similar to the South Korean, which kind of finished at the same time. So they're pre-contracts, so they can somebody can agree a pre-contract in June 30th for because their season finishes in uh, December, so they can get someone. So like you say, so that's six months from now, so they could actually. So they've all. I think Rangers have, like you say, they've agreed the pre-contract. I think Michael Beals even said that. Um, so, like you say, it'll be a cut price deal for them because the players are already going to go there in six months' time regardless. And, like you say, I, th- I think he will strengthen that squad. I don't know where he'll fit in the system, but I think he is quite an attacking midfielder. And I think Rangers have got a, a, quite a, few, a number of players that can play in that uh, position, so it'll add competition for places in there. In terms of Danilo, it's quite a big transfer fee to pay for a striker. Um, £6 million pounds. I believe. Um I've got to be brutally honest with you, I've never seen the man play. Um, but to pay that sort of fee, he must have something about him. Um I think is what was it final he's playing for. So a decent, decent decent side that playing European competition. Um and they also challenge at the top of the league most seasons for the Eredivisie. So must be a good caliber player, and like you say, like they've got they've already strengthened that area. So I think they were looking for that. Alfredo Morelos replacement and obviously they lost um, they've sold Antonio Chola as well so like you said he didn't get much time at Rangers as well so I think they've ident- Michael Beale's identified he wasn't his striker and Morelos left so they kind of want someone to replace and fill that void and I think he could be the man so just have to wait and see how he fits into the Rangers team Yeah um, you know I think it's kind of too kind of impressive potential signs for Rangers. So just starting off with Danilo, uh, I think that's I'll be honest with you, I think that's a massive coup for Rangers. I think he was the top scorer for Reinhardt last season, uh, in the NADVC. Um and I know 
in terms of the Feyenoord fans are desperate for him not to go because I think he was a he was our best player last season. And um, so for Rangers to to kind of pull that off, if it does go through, I mean, I think it's really impressive. Uh, you know, six million pounds is quite a that's a big fee in Scotland. Uh, you know, I think he's going to be the highest earner at Rangers as well. Um, so yeah, I think it's I think it's really impressive the fact that they could pull this one off and uh, you know, you you were saying there about trying to find that place for Morelos. I mean. Uh, Danilo could really be the one that they're looking for, um. So and they've already signed as well. And you think about it, they've already signed um Sergio Dessos and Sam Lammers, as well. So they're kind of uh, Abdullah Sima. Yep, as well. So in terms of the four positions, they look very much, you know, like they've they've strengthened a lot. Um, and then in terms of uh, Sequentes, you know, he's been quite he's been around for quite a while now. And um, he's been linked with European clubs in the past. Uh, you know, he's he's been quite a big player for Los Angeles um in the MLS. Uh so for, again, I think it's a really good I think that'd be a really good sign for Rangers to to pull off. Uh, I think he's from Ecuador, Sequentes. So I think Morelos kind of uh, sorry, I think he's from Colombia, Sequentes, I'm not sure, but maybe Morelos might have had a um kind of he might have said something to Morelos, Morelos might have given him some uh, you know, advice. Um, uh, so, no, I think it's for Cifuentes, for Rangers to get Cifuentes as well, I think that would be a really good kind of smart signing. Um, and yeah, I think the Rangers team, when you look at it now, you know, they've had a lot of change this summer in terms of players leaving. Um, and I think, you know, the Rangers fans would be, and Michael Beal, I think they'll be really happy with the squad they've got at the moment. And, you know, and I don't think they're kind of finished. Uh, I think there is some other signings that they're looking at that they might be kind of uh, looking at. So, yeah, so it, the, the squad for Rangers is looking quite, you know, it's, it's improving uh, day by day. So we'll need to see that with that one as well. So this time next week again, you know, that'll be all confirmed or not confirmed, we don't know. So let's just see what happens with that. Uh, so, Pierce, um, is there any transfer news that has interested you recently? Yeah, so the one that's kind of stuck out to me and I think it's quite an interesting one is uh, James Ward-Prowse, potentially to West Ham. Um, I think James Ward-Prowse is at an age 27-28, captain of Southampton, but I just think um, his quality in the ball uh, can play a number of positions in midfield. Um, and obviously he's a set-piece specialist. I think he's the closest thing to David Beckham that the Premier League has at the moment. Um and I just do I do think like you set pieces like you say from corners, assisting goals, scoring free kicks, penalties, and just his all round ability to score from distance and pass and create and defend as well. I think he's just a real box to box midfielder. And I think if they can get a cut price deal, maybe forty million, considering he is in the championship, I and mean, I think he has tied down for another good few years, he'd be a more than capable replacement of Declan Rice. And I think they've had positive talks at the moment, but I don't think they've discussed a fee. But I do think that would be a that be a that be a real coup for West Ham if they manage to get uh, James Ward Prowse. Yeah, that that that's quite uh for West Ham because obviously they have lost it in race. So it's quite obvious David Moyes are kind of looking for that kind of replacement. You know, you were saying James Ward Prowse. That's there's quite a lot of talk about that recently in the last few days. Um, but also, uh, I think from Fulham, Joe Paulina as well. It's been linked quite heavily with West Ham. Uh, so, you know, you were saying about Ward Price, it's quite a, you know, that's quite an interesting one. So we'll see kind of where that one goes. And um, for me, I mean, obviously the Mbappe one's quite, uh, that, that's quite a big one. Um, but uh, for me, the in terms of sticking kind of with Southampton, uh, Romeo Lavia from Southampton has been heavily linked to Liverpool. So they had a big rejected Liverpool. For Lavia, I think it was yesterday. It was around about the thirty odd million mark, and you know I think Liverpool are preparing to put in uh, an our bid, which will be over forty million, and I think the fans will accept that. You know this is all coming off the back of the kind of impeding departure of Henderson, who's going to Al Etifak in Saudi Arabia, and also um, Fabinho, who's also going to Saudi Arabia as well. I think so. Liverpool kind of strengthening a lot in that midfield department. 
and just lastly, uh, I think it's quite an interesting one as well that two ex um, Celtic players, Mr. Dembele and Jack Hendry, uh, look like they're linking up with former Rangers manager um, Stephen Gerrard, and they two are going to be joining Aleti Fat. Uh, you know, I think they've both had medicals, and I think they're joining up in the training camp very soon. So, I mean, I think if me and you would have been sitting here a few years ago saying that Mr. Dembele and Jack Hendry will be being managed by Stephen Gerrard in Saudi Arabia, I think we would have we would have laughed. We never we would never have believed it. So it just shows how crazy football is uh, nowadays. Yeah, it was crazy. So, it was years ago that um, Mr. Dembele scored a double against uh, Manchester City to knock out the Champions League. Yeah, you're you're right. Yeah, I mean it's it's quite a it's quite a football. The the transfer the transfer uh, window is just it's just so much so crazy nowadays. Um, so yeah, so that these kind of situations are all kind of happening. I mean, it, <clears throat> I think the transfer window is kind of hotting up again. It's getting really busy now, and you know. Uh, next week there'll be more probably transfer news that me and you will be discussing um, so let's see what happens so for the final part of the show Pierce will now give his Asian football roundup yeah so start with some Asian football news so um, PSG have officially announced that they will play a friendly against Jumbo Hyundai Motors uh, on the 3rd of August at the Busan Asiad Stadium um, Atletico Madrid will also play in uh, South Korea. They've got a friendly against uh, a K League eleven, and a friendly match tomorrow afternoon, um, Thursday twenty seventh of July. The kickoff time will be twelve p.m. and that is at the Seoul World Cup Stadium. And like you touched on earlier, um, Celtic have confirmed the signings of Kwon Hyuk Kyu and Yang Hyun Jun. Uh, both players are presented to the media at Lennox Town as are now officially Celtic players. Uh, Kwon Hyuk Kyo is a defence midfielder and has been given the number 22 shirt. Yang Hyun Jun is predominantly a right winger and will wear the number 13 jersey vacated by the now retired ex celt Aaron Moy. So in terms of uh, the Korean League, um, so Friday, July 21st, Hoang Steelers 2, Jumbo Hyundai Motors 1, Ilsan Hyundai 2, Jeju United 1, Saturday, July 22nd, Suwon FC 0, Guangzhou FC 1, FC Seoul 0, Incheon United 1, Gangwon FC 1, Suwon Samsung Blue Wings 2, Dejan Hana Citizen 1, Daegu FC 0. So it's leaving the table looking like this. At the top of the three, we've got Ulsan Hyundai, 24 games, 56 points. And in second place, we've got Poing Steelers in 44. And in third and fourth, joint respectively, uh, SC Seoul and Jumbach Hyundai Motors. And down at the bottom of the table, it's very tight. Um, you've got Gang 1 SC, rock bottom on 16 points, and you've got 11th position uh, on 18 points is Suwon, Samson Bluings, and right above them is the uh, Suwon counterparts in Suwon SC on 20 points. Um, so the K-League 1 returns next weekend, uh, Friday the 4th, 4th of August, with two matches played, and uh, that's we're both set for 7.30 kickoff, and it's FC Seoul versus Poang Steelers, which are our top of the three clash, and then um, Guangzhou FC and Dejan Hana Citizen. Because obviously the, the K League All Stars, so a player from every two players from each team will be playing Atletico Madrid, so they both all, all teams will take a, a week off while that game gets commenced. So we've just uh, finished off the Korean League uh, table, but uh, the J League table, um, there was no matches played this week apart from one, which was on Saturday, the July 22nd, which was a catch-up game for both um, Vassil Kobe and Kawasaki Frontale, and that was another top-of-the-table clash because um, Kawasaki Frontale started the season quite slowly, but they've started to pick up in recent weeks, getting consecutive wins, but this game finished a 2 0 draw. Uh, so it's leaving the table... All 21 matches played for all, t- uh, all the 18 teams. So Vassell Kobe are now had that game in hand over Yokama F. Marinos, which is going in Yokama F. Marinos' favour, because now they're only one point ahead of them and 44 points, and Yokama F. Marinos are second with 43 points. And in third, fourth position, not too far behind uh, in the chasing pack, we get Nagoya Grampus on 39 points 
and Urawa Red Diamonds, the Asian Champions League winners, on 37 points in fourth position. And down at the bottom of the table, it's just as tight. Uh, Shonan Belmer, bottom of the table with 13 points, 17th position with Kawashi Oresol on 14 points, and in the 16th position we've got Yokama FC on 15 points. So J League 1 also returns next weekend following the Japan Tour of 2023. There will be two matches played on Saturday, the 5th of August, with both set for 7 pm kickoffs. Uh, we've got Nagoya Grampus against Alberich Nagata and Shonen Belmer versus Sanfrecce Hiroshima. And that is all your latest Asian football news. Thank you, Pierce. And thank you, everyone, for listening to this episode of the Football Chuggy podcast. This podcast will be, will be available to listen to on the Football Chuggy YouTube channel and also the Football Chuggy website. Thanks for listening and see you soon. Bye-bye.